Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age 2. In the last session, we ran for our lives from the blight as it consumed Lothering, where we used to live, and we hopped on a boat, travelled across the sea. Oh wow, that's very pretty. Seeing them, like, shrouded in fog a bit. And uh, we have arrived here in Kirkwall, where they're not letting people in. Also, we were aided by Flemeth, and uh, we've got something going on. Uh, in the future, which is like talking about this as a flashback. So, interesting stuff. Let us continue on and see where we go. What's this X here? There's an X on the floor. Like, right here. Not sure what that means. Oh, on the, on the mini-map, I mean. There's an X right here. Can we do anything over here? Doesn't appear so. Alright, let's chat to you then. Get back to the crowd, you lot. Trying to bully your way through won't get you into Kirkwall any faster. But you do intend to let us in. <laughs> we have enough poor of our own in the free marches. We don't need you refugees piling up here like a midden's heap. Oh, well, that's nice. What is this place? I heard someone call this fortress the Gallows. Is it a prison? Used to be. Back in the Imperial days. They kept slaves here until the rebellion. Now the Templars run it and use it to lock up their mages. Guess not much has changed. <laughs> oh great, they lock up the mages? Are mages imprisoned here? Well, no more than anywhere else. It's a circle of magi now. Magic is to serve man, not rule him. And mages are better locked up where they don't hurt anyone. I think you're better locked up, mate. What will happen to us? Why aren't we being allowed into the city? If it were up to me, I'd bar the gates and let you find somewhere else to beg. But it's not. Some of you lot might have legitimate business in the city. So Knight Commander Meredith wants us to sort you all out. Most of you are getting right back on your ships, though. Knight Commander Meredith? That's a Templar title. Why would a city guardsman answer to the Templars? We don't answer to her, but she's the power in Kirkwall. Oh, good. I don't know what would happen if the Viscount went against something she wanted, but he's sure never taken that chance. Well, that seems like a terrible setup. Uh, okay, well, tell me who to talk to. There must be someone in charge I can speak with. <sighs> yes, yes, always the same story. You want in, talk to Captain Ewald. I'm just here to keep you refuse from climbing the walls. Fuck me. Refuse? Talk to Captain Ewald. Don't talk to me. What a complete tool. What a grade A nonce. We fled the blight to come here. Was Wesley based out of the Lothering Chantry? I don't remember ever seeing him there. He served elsewhere. He was coming to find me at Ostagar. Were you familiar with every Templar in Lothering? How else was I supposed to know when to run and hide? Kirkwall has been sealed. You cannot enter. Okay, anything down here? I don't know if I can get myself in yet. I like the uh, more defined paths of the minimap. Than the paths looked in DAO. It was just sort of a big splodge, I guess, in, uh, in DAO. Can't go up there. Hello, Frederick. Oh, did I not tell you to keep the rabble out of here? There's only so much I can do myself. If I don't control the gallows, then what am I paying for? Seems like a dickhead. There's Captain Newald. We're not animals, you can just corral them. We've no intention. Let us through, you flaming blighter. We're not staying in this pit. Then get back on your ship and leave. Kirkwall has no more room for refugees. The ship's already gone. We've paid good coin to get here. You and half of Ferelden. There's nothing I can do. The city is full. A guard told me differently. One of the guards said you were letting in people who have business in the city. That's right. We've seen you let lots of people through. Citizens and merchants that make it worth our while. I'll assume that you don't have any more coin than these gentlemen. We've been letting you Ferelden's in for months. You're too late. There's no more room. But we have family here. Doesn't that mean anything? I've heard claims like that a thousand times already, trust me. 
We'll find some ships to take you all back to Ferelden, eventually. Until then, you stay here. Be reasonable. Our uncle is Gamlin Amel. He knows we're coming. Surely someone could find him. Gamlin? I know that name. He's a nobleman here in the city. Our family has an estate. A nobleman? The only Gamlin I know is a weasel who couldn't rub two coppers together. He comes back, I'll bring you to him. But I don't have time to... What? You're gonna let them through? I didn't say anything about... We've been here for four days! They just got here! That's it! We're carving our way out of here! Men! Looks like a fight! Wow, that is a Be bit of a fucking choice you've just made there, my dude. What the fuck? Unbel Captain, murders 20 right? people. Unbelievable. Am, no thanks to you. Where is everyone? Go find them. I want this kept under control. You have my thanks. Look, I can't get you into the city. It's not my decision. But I'll find your uncle. And Are they not going to grab Bethany now and be like, we just saw you're a fucking mage into the fucking tower with you? Like, <laughs> is that... Are we? Is they just cool with the fact that she just... Blasted the shit out of everyone with fire? It's been three days. This waiting has to end. I'm sure it won't be much longer. Gamlin must still be Wait, what? For it's us. been three days? And if he's not. Wait. I think someone's coming. Leandra. Damn, girl. The years haven't been kind to you. All right, Gamlin. dickhead. Okay. Let me say up front, I wasn't maybe maybe they've got that this. banter. The blight, your husband, dead. I uh, figured you'd pretty much be Ferelden for life. Oh, Gamlin, we came too late. My poor Carver didn't make it. A drastic guide him. Oh, make her save me, Leandra. Don't drop this on me here. I don't even know if I can help you get in. Uh. What about Mother? I'm more concerned about Mother. Can you get her in at least? No. We stay together. I was hoping to grease some palms, but the Knight Commander's been cracking down. We're gonna need more grease. <laughs> but what about the estate? Surely Father left something when he died? Right, uh, about the estate. It's, um, gone. To settle a debt. I've been meaning to write you. Then there's no hope. N not quite. I know some people who might help. If you're not too delicate about the company you keep. Okay. So there's no family fortune? Mother said our family was wealthy. You really can't help us. I am blighted helping. I've got two offers of work from people who've got the coin to open those gates. I still can't believe you sold the estate. Gamlin, how could you? Well, I didn't expect your blasted family to show up on my doorstep. I've got a nice place in Lowtown. You'll see, it'll all work out. Is it a nice place? I don't know if you call a place Lowtown and then have nice places in it. <laughs> Why don't we just leave? Do we need to stay in Kirkwall? Let's go to another city. This was my home. I can't believe they won't let me come back. Every city on the coast's been hip deep in Ferelden since the Blight. You could try your luck further inland, I suppose, but it won't be easy. No, we're not putting Mother through that. We'll All find right. a way. Uh, sounds like fun. Let's hear it, Uncle. What do you have in mind? I talked to my contacts, and I found some people who might be willing to pay your way into the city. The catch is, you and your sister have to work off the debt. 
and for a year. A year? A year? A year! It's the best I could do. Trust me when I say a bunch of refugees won't get a better option anywhere else. This is the best you could do, man? So, you're selling us into indentured servitude? That's your idea? Think of it as having a job waiting for you in your new home. Wonderful. I managed to convince my contacts to come to the gallows to meet you personally. Miran heads up the mercenary company, the Red Iron. They're looking for recruits. A Thenril. I guess you might call her a smuggler. Either one of them can help you. All you need to do is find them in the courtyard and convince them you're worth the trouble. Bethany? What do you think about this, Bethany? We've come this far. I don't care who we work for, as long as it means we don't have to go back. All right, tell me about the mercenary. What kind of man is this Miran? He's a hired sword. What do you expect him to be like? I wouldn't bring him home for dinner or anything, but he's got a decent reputation. I wouldn't have asked him if I thought he'd cross you. And the smuggler? How dangerous is this smuggler's work? Well, it won't be pretty working for her. She's a pretty small fish compared to some of the other thieves' guilds around here. But she's tough, she's fair, and she never deals in slaves or flesh. I'll go talk to them. Let's find them and see what they have to say. Oh, Gamlin, I don't know about this. It's a lot of coin, Leandra. Don't go expecting our name to carry the kind of weight it used to. And what of me? I will not allow others to incur debts on my behalf. <laughs> Can't see that it makes a difference. You look like a lady who can pull her own weight. Then you'll come with us. I have no real option. Thank you. All right. Quest updated. Boop. The destruction of Lothering. Find either a Thenril or Miran in the Gallows Courtyard. Either might be willing to provide a way in. Okay. Uh, did we get any of these? Combat. Wait, there's a combat update? Uh, commanders like Captain Ewald can bolster their allies with powerful effects. Because you are his ally in this fight, Ewald will increase your effectiveness. When facing enemy commanders, keep them stunned or knocked down, or their inspired troops may overwhelm you. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Uh, you got anything more to say? So, that was your uncle, was it? Good. I thought he was another confidence man trying to sell promises. I don't suppose he has the coin you'll need to get in. Uh, what about our help? We just helped save your life. Isn't that worth something? If it were just up to me, I'd let you through. But there are a lot of eyes watching, a lot of palms that need greasing. My suggestion? Wait for a ship and hope the next city hasn't already closed their doors. Wait. What did that update? It didn't. Hmm. Was that still the update from when we finished that conversation? Is this the same bug from DAO where it brings stuff back up if you talk to someone else before... Uh... Before it's done. Miran. And you must be Hawk. Nice. Your uncle talked up a storm about you. He better not be blowing more smoke out his ass. So you're a merc? I'd like to know more about you first. Right. You're not a marcher like your uncle. The Red Iron is well known in these parts. We pick who we work for and keep our noses clean. But anyone screws with us, we mess them up. Makes sense. Makes sense. I never pictured myself as the mercenary type. <laughs> so you're paying a lot of money. Getting us into the city will take a lot of coin. <laughs> Did I mention the Red Iron gets paid pretty well? Not to mention your uncle said your sister's a mage. We're willing to pay for that. Hmm. I do... I will say, I am really enjoying the rogue playstyle so far. Obviously, we're only at the start, and there's, I've only got a couple of abilities, but I am, I am really liking it. However, I do kind of miss having mage dialogue options, because if I was a mage, I assume I'd have something to say about me here. 
And I do kind of miss the fact that I will no longer have those options presented. Uh, you know Bethany is a mage? Apparently Uncle Gamlin likes to talk. You stick with us. You'll be safe. For a year, at least. How'd you know Gamlin? My uncle doesn't seem like the sort to hang out with mercenaries. He doesn't. Gamlin cheated one of my men at a wallet match. You turn out, we'll call it even. Man, our uncle seems dumb as fuck. <laughs> These guys are like, yeah, you mess with us, we're gonna fucking kill you. And he's like, yeah, I'm just gonna cheat one of them. I'll do whatever you need. I'm ready to prove myself. Noble bastard named Friedrich is here in the gallows. Gave us bad info. Almost killed my men. Now he's hiding out here, waiting for a ship. He sees us coming, he'll run for sure. But he doesn't know you. Go kill him and his men. We'll make sure no one asked why. Alrighty. Oh, I thought we... Oh, no, we can. We can. I want to see what this person... What their offer is. Because we only need one. But uh, let's see what they're offering. Are you a Senrel? He must be Gamlin's niece. Interesting. I don't know what he told you about us, but he certainly told us a great deal about you. He didn't say anything about me, did he? Enough to pique our interest, provided you can justify your uncle's confidence. You're a smuggler? I'd like to know more about what we'd be doing for you. I can be honest. We don't compete with the Thieves' Guild, but we keep our fingers in a lot of pots. That said, we're not killers or slavers. Anything short of that, however, is fair game. Do what you want, but this sounds fishy to me. We can't afford to be choosy. Sorry, you didn't have anything to say about the dude who was just like, can you go and murder some people for us? But you do have something to say about the woman that's going, we don't do murders? You're offering a lot for us. I hear getting us into the city isn't cheap. If you're as good as your uncle claims, we're hoping you'll be worth it. After all, it's not every day we're offered an apostate services. He told you too? Does everyone know about us? If the circle hasn't descended upon you, my guess is no. The Templars in Kirkwall like to think they have all mages properly leashed, but when has that ever been true? I mean, we she literally just started doing magic in the best. courtyard just now, so... The first time. How'd you know Gamlin? How did you get to be one of my uncle's contacts? Is that what he calls me? He owes us after that last big idea. If you turn out, though, we'll consider things even. Tell me what you need done. I wonder if we can do both. There's a merchant named Cavril, friend of the Templars. So they let him set up his little shop here in the gallows. We supplied him in return for a piece of the take, but now he won't pay up. We can't go near him without him screaming for the guard, but you can. Get our money from him and you're in. All right. Both are interesting, so we have two things we could do. I wonder if it will let us do both. Um, let's do the one that doesn't involve bloodshed first, which is this one, right? I've already told you. I can't give you any more for them. But that was everything we have. It's all we brought with us. And I feel for you, Sarah, but it's the best I can do. If they just let us into the city, I could get three times that price. <sighs> Myron. Your business is done. But... Oh. Now then, what can I do for you, Sarah? Uh, investigate. What kind of shop is this? I didn't think there'd be any stores here in the fortress. There are many merchants who come here right now who can't afford the bribes to enter the city. So the Templars suggested having someone set up shop. Temporarily. <laughs> and I am the lucky man. Lucky indeed. You mean you paid your own bribes to be here? If they allowed everyone to set up shop, this place would turn into a bazaar. Sadly, there's only so much I can do for those Ferelden's poor sods. I'm sure you're very broken up over it. <laughs> uh, I meant you. Uh, folks like yourself. <clears throat> Did you cheat that woman? She didn't seem very happy with the deal you made. 
Uh, what am I supposed to do? Buy every piece of furniture these people dragged with them? I'm sure they'd rather not sell what little they have left. My point is that I'm running a business, not a charitable order. I'm sorry. I imagine the profits help with the guilt. Uh, Athenral sent me. I believe you owe your business partners something. Oh, I see. Should I go tell the guards? Not just yet. I want to hear this. So, Athenral sent you to collect, did she? Too cowardly to do it herself. Aveline? Care to step in here? Only because this toad deserves it. You have a choice. Pay, or I beat it out of you and your men. God damn! Hey! Stay back! Just hey! Take what's in the chest. Take it all. Now I'm getting out of here. Let those guards find someone else to buy Dogland junk. Alright. Aveline Friendship plus ten. Okay. And two gold. So now we have to earn our way into the city. How hard can that be? Here you go. As requested. Will you look at that? Tell your uncle we'll make the arrangements. Welcome aboard. Cool. And we got a level. Wait, wrong button. Man, I'm going to be doing that for so long. <laughs> the, I've got an entire like 80 to 90 hours of muscle memory of hit the back button to do the thing. And now it's the opposite button. <laughs> um, right, so. Let's go another into health for us. And uh, let's go... Hmm. Maybe cunning next time. Yeah. Okay, and then over here we have the explosive strike. So this is the one we read last time that after doing the unforgiving chain up to 10 hits, you then press this and it massively increases your damage. Plus 50% per basic attack in previous chain up to 10. Sounds pretty crazy. And then you can upgrade it to guarantee a crit and inflict significantly more damage against enemies who've been knocked off balance by a warrior. Hmm. Okay, and then for you, we just pump that strength and, you know what, let's just pump that strength. Perception maintains constant awareness of the battlefield so long as she has a shield equipped. Enemies receive no bonus for attacking from behind. Sounds pretty good. Let's have a look at some of the other stuff available though. Uh, fights with discipline, not anger. Or heavy swings that cleave through foes. Warmonger. We could get... Oh, she's got taunt. Boost other party members' mana or stamina regen. Okay. Guardian. Serve and protect requires Aveline friendship. Aveline's dedication to Hawk verges on overbearing. Damage transfer 10% from Hawk to Aveline? That's very interesting. And plus five damage resist. Huh. And then this one, watchful eye requires Aveline rivalry. Recent events have put Aveline on her guard and that gives her damage resist plus 10 instead of plus five, but we don't transfer the damage. That's very interesting. I really like that. That's a cool system. Uh, for now, I think we'll just stick with the weapon and shield stuff. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, do we get anything for Bethany then? Uh, no, she doesn't have a friendship or whatchamacallit tree, it looks like. Hmm. Most curious. So now... There's Gamlin. Are we... Okay, so the other quest has just disappeared by the looks of it. If we go into our journal, is it just gone? 
Yeah, it's just gone. Okay. I never thought I would find myself begging to be allowed back into Kirkwall. Any luck? Yes. They've agreed to help us. I'll speak to a Athenril and see when the bribes can be made. Wait here. Then we made it. The voyage is over. Uh, so long as we're safe. The blight may still spread, but for now we have a new home. If only Carver were here with us. And Wesley. Nah, fuck Wesley. Let's just see what happens. We have a long year ahead of us. Thus began the champion's first year in Kirkwall. Word arrived from across the sea that the hero of Ferelden had defeated the Blight. Hells yeah, I did. Chad. But Lothering was destroyed. Kirkwall was the champion's home now. So she remained, paying off her debt. Made a name for herself in the underworld. It was a busy year in the city. That's when the Kunari landed. Oh yeah. A great storm had caught their ship and left hundreds of warriors stranded in the city, waiting to return home. That's it's... also when the trouble began with the mages. The oh, Templars boy. had become very powerful under Knight Commander Meredith. But most importantly, that's when I first met the champion. Hmm. I wonder if Sten will be among them. Wonder if Wind's dead by now. No. Andraste's tits, human. You know how many people want to hire onto this expedition? But we heard you're going into the deep roads. Surely you'll need all the help you can- No. You're too late. Already done. This is a sort of venture that can make a man for life. I'm not about to take any chances hiring random humans. Uh, we have experience, dude. We've fought and killed Darkspawn. How many of your hired men can say the same? Get in line, human. Half of Kirkwall wants to be my best friend right now. You're looking for a quick way out of the slums, right? You and every other Ferelden in this dump. Find another meal ticket. What are we supposed to do now? We've got nothing to stop the next person who tries to sell us out. This expedition was our last chance. Relax. Don't worry, Bethany. I won't let any big bad Templars come get you. It's not a joke. If the Templars find me, the best I can hope is to be locked away for the rest of my life. If they don't kill me outright. We need coin, status, something we can hide behind. As long as we're just refugees, we're no one. <sighs> Maybe Gamlin knows someone who can talk to Bartram for us. Hmm, it might work. He did get us into this, but, I mean, what choice do we have, it seems like. He always seems to know what's going on. We might as well ask. Otherwise, I don't know what we'll do. We just got robbed. Oh my goodness. It's flashback I know a dude. You could take every coin out of your pockets just by smiling at you. But you, you don't have the style to work high town, let alone the merchant's guild. You might want to find yourself a new line of work. <sighs> Off you go. <sighs> How do you do? Merrick Tethras, at your service. Hello. I apologize for Bartrand. He wouldn't know an opportunity if it hit him square in the jaw. But you would. I would. What my brother doesn't realize is that we need someone like you. He would never admit it either. He's too proud. I, however, am quite practical. 
Okay. Are you in the ex expedition then? You're part of Bartran's venture. That's right. The deep roads wouldn't normally be my thing, but I can't allow the head of our family to go down there alone. So as you might imagine, I have more than a passing interest in this expedition's success. You know who we are then? What makes you so certain we can help? You know nothing about us. Oh, on the contrary. You've made quite the name for yourself over the last year. The Coterie has been squeezing smugglers out left and right, and the only I'm surprised it's just straight away, like, to you two. only an hour the into the game jumped us forward an entire year. Days. Not bad for a Ferelden fresh off the boat. What about Bethany? You must have heard of my sister as well, then. Only a little. She is certainly welcome to come, but I'll leave that up to you. Frankly, I'd rather you take the credit. Madam, your secrets are safe with me. Find out what he's offering. We need a way into this expedition. Okay, uh, how do we reason with your brother, then? There must be some way to persuade your brother to hire us on. We don't need another hireling. We need a partner. The truth is, Bartran's been tearing his beard out trying to fund this on his own, but he can't do it. Invest in the expedition. Fifty sovereigns and he can't refuse. Not with me there to vouch for you. He'll share the profits? Your brother doesn't seem like the sort who's willing to split profits. My brother is many things, but he is not stupid. Far better to share the profits than be trapped in a tie with a thousand dark spawn between you and the exit. Trust me. He'll come around. You'd vouch? Why would you stick your neck out for a complete stranger? I'd rather take a chance on someone with your reputation than head into the deep roads unprepared. And besides, we'd be your partners. I'm willing to give a little trust if you are. Okay, well, I don't have 50. It sounds interesting. But if I had any gold, I wouldn't need this job. You need to think big. There's only a brief window after a blight when the deep roads won't be crawling with darks. Well, actually, the treasure you find down there could set you and your actually, family up for the life. architect. It won't may be easy. Have helped with but that. It's a chance. I think we have to take it. Better to work our way into this expedition than sit around waiting to be thrown in the gallows. We work together, you and I, and before you know it, you'll have all the capital you need. What do you say? I mean, it seems like a bit of a long shot. There might be nothing down there except darkspawn and rubble. How can you be sure we'll make a profit? Well, Bartrand isn't grasping its strings. He's operating on some good information. Some of the deep roads are so old, even the dwarves have forgotten them. We just need to get down there, then Bartrand will lead the way. You and I will be there to handle problems. Okay, how could you help? What makes you so certain you'll be useful to me? I know everyone in this city worth knowing. I can help you find the jobs you need, and if you don't need me for that, there's always Bianca. Bianca? You named your crossbow. Huh? <laughs> and why not? She's a beauty. Isn't that right, sweetheart? Uh, I'm supposed to trust you? What's to stop you from taking my investment and running? You'll be traveling with the expedition, and I'll be at your side. If I cross you, you'll be the first one to know, and I'll be the last. I don't know, man. You're asking me to take a lot on faith. You're asking for a guarantee? I don't know that I can give you one. Look, I know the Templars have been asking questions. How terrible would it be to get out of the city for a while? If this works out, you'll be wealthy enough that the Order won't be able to touch you. You need the coin and I need your help. We need each other. I can't make it sound better than that. Alrighty. You have a deal. Perfect. Kirkwell's crawling with work. You set aside some coin from every job and you'll have the money in no time. Maybe Aveline can find us some work. She's got a position with the city guard now. We should talk privately when you get the chance. In the hanged man, maybe. I'll be there when I'm not with you. Now, let's go see what trouble we can stir up. Keep a hand on How your you coin, Hawk. There are more cut purses in Hightown than in the rest of the city combined. Mans has joined our party. Okay, so we're doing magic for you. Let's give you a little bit of health. Uh, and let's go for willpower this time. Uh, let's go for magic. Uh, and we want the Cone of Cold. 
Deadly Ice shoots forth to injure and slow opponents. Wait, only injure and slow, not completely freeze this time? Oh well. It was very good last time. I'm sure it'll be very good this time. Okay, and then you are a rogue. Uh, so you're going to want to do... Dex, Cunning... Mm. Sounds good. Bianca. He has a skill tree named after his crossbow. All right. Uh, what's that? Pinning shot. Sure. Bursting arrow. This arrow explodes on impact, showing showering the area in shrapnel and flame. Sounds good. Sounds great. Uh, okay, we've got a lot here. Main plot. Long way home, we got to deliver Flemeth's amulet. Wait, it's been an entire year and we still haven't done that? I don't know if she's going to be pleased with us. A new home. Go to Gamelin's home. Friend in the guard. Aveline may have information about working with the city guard. Talk to her at the barracks. Uh, the Deep Roads Expedition. Find a way to become a partner. Bring 50 sovereigns to Bartrand. And business discussion. Talk to Varric in the Hanged Man pub. Alright. Uh, companions, visit companions' home bases to have longer discussions than you can in the field. So the pub is Varric's home base, I guess that's what that's saying. Oh my god, okay. Bertrand, half of Kirkwall wants to be my best friend right now. The history of noble house Tethra stretches back to the foundation of Orzammar. The memories say that three times a, house of, a child of house Tethra took the office of assembly steward. They held appointments in the shape rate of memories and the shape rate of golems, but no longer. In the second year of the reign of King Endrin Aedukan, Lord Andvar Tethras was found guilty before the assembly of willfully manipulating the proving matches in favour of his house. For this affront to the ancestors, he and all his house were sentenced to exile on the surface. Andvar died a mere five years later, leaving behind his lady Ilsa, ten-year-old Bartrand, and two-year-old Varric. There's eight years between them, okay. Exile, surface life, and the loss of her husband conspired against Lady Ilsa, who took to drink, leaving young Bartrand to manage what was left of House Tethras. By the time he was 15, Bartrand had doubled his family's fortune. The disgrace of House Tethras fueled his ambition, and his once noble title gave him an instant place among the Kalnas, the old money elite of the Dwarven Merchants Guild. He used it to build alliances and business ventures as if he were a member of the Orzammar Assembly. By the, tame by the time Lady Ilsa died, Bartrand had made the Tethras family one of the guild's most influential, but wealth and power on the surface couldn't sate him. He began to court alliances with the wealthiest ascendant families, branching into banking and mercenary companies. Guild members mutter that nothing will satisfy Bartrand but a complete reconstruction of House Tethras' estate in Orzammar down to the rivers of lava built in Kirkwall. Bethany Hawk. I was just hoping it would be different here in Kirkwall. We're not running away, we're coming home. Even growing up as an apostate has not dimmed Bethany's faith in sunny nature, though it has coloured her view of the world. Bethany wishes above all else to be normal. She appreciates the trouble her family took to keep her out of the circle, but the running, hiding and constant fear have taken their toll. Though she would never admit so to her mother, not after all she sacrificed to protect her, Bethany sometimes wonders whether she would be better off in the circle. At least there she would be with other mages, confident she'd be serving the will of the Maker and not defying a millennium of religious teachings. Still, her first loyalty is to her family, despite her doubts. She gladly embraces her magic if it keeps them safe. She has a teasing rivalry with her twin, Carver, and greatly respects Marion. I don't think she has a teasing rivalry with her twin, Carver, if I'm being brutally honest. I reckon that she doesn't anymore have a teasing rivalry. <laughs> the hero of Ferelden belonged to the Circle of Magi in Ferelden and resided in the tower at Lake Callanhad for most of his life. First Enchanter Irving recommended the hero to Grey Warden Commander Duncan. Shortly after the hero's harrowing, Duncan recruited him into the Order. The hero fought and killed the Archdemon and lived to tell the tale. With the Archdemon gone, the Darkspawn ranks broke and the Horde was easily routed. After ending the Blight, the hero of Ferelden took up the mantle of Warden Commander and began the task of rebuilding the Order in Ferelden. Hell yeah we did. Varric Tethras. I know everyone in this city worth knowing. Varric was born three years after his father's exile from Ozma into the world of the Merchant's Guild. The ancestors never spoke, and paragons were the heroes in tall tales. The number of dances a Kalna lady gave to a lowborn ascendant boy were more pivotal, pivotal than the reign of kings. While Bartrand ran the business and drove House Tethras ever higher up the social ladder, Varric looked at after the family and their retainers. His mother, Lady Ilsa, suffered terribly from the trauma of her disgrace and exile, finding solace in liquor and smoke. 
It fell to her younger son, son to try and curb the worst of her drunken rages, to keep her from becoming a matter of public scandal, and to care for her when she fell ill from her excesses. Though she is famous throughout the Merchant's Guild, though he is famous throughout the Merchant's Guild for his stories, Varric speaks rarely of himself or his family. Most of Kirkwall knows him, everyone has bought him a drink at least once, for the sake of his fictions rather than his family connections. Cool. Anything in Art of War? No. Cool. Okay, that is... Oh wait, no. Wait, did we go from the bottom up? Shit. The Coterie. Kirkwall is built on a solid foundation of greed and human suffering, and its underworld is a place where everything is for sale and every one is fair game. There are many criminal empires within the city, some of which have been around since the Imperium used Kirkwall as a hub in the slave trade. Alliances, spying, manipulation, betrayal, and open warfare is all commonplace in the never-ending struggle for power. The Coterie is a thieves' guild that has been around for almost a century, but until recently was never a major player in the underworld. Some 20 years ago, the strongest of the local criminal empires was an ancient guild known as the Sabrathan, but its leader was betrayed from within, and during the turmoil, the Coterie made a successful grab for power. Since then, they've sunk their claws into almost every level of Kirkwall, including the City Guard, the Dwarven Merchants Guild, and some of the most influential citizens in the city. It's safe to say that the Coterie gets a slice of every pie, and very little goes on in Kirkwall that escapes their notice. Alrighty. Keep a hand on your coin, Hawk. There are more cut purses in Hightown than in the rest of the city combined. Well, we have access to Quite a Just the way I like it. lot of a larger area right now, it looks like. Okay, so what have we got up here? Up here we have Worthy. Down there we have Sebastian. Who are they? Uh, a friend in the guard. Okay, that's the main... That's one of the main things. Okay, Worthy and Sebastian. Who are... Which, which quests are they? Not that. Not that. That's the one at the bottom. Not that. And not that. Wait, what? Is it... Oh, wait, is it DLC stuff? A memento of the past. Is that legacy? That must be legacy, right? Uh... Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what one is what. That is seeming not super clear. I guess let's go and chat to this dude and see what's up. Keep moving. Hawk, long time no see, my friend. Worthy. When did you get back into town? Oh, uh, just a month or so ago. Things didn't work out in Orzammar. You aren't still working for a Thenral, are you? Your year must be up by now. I'm funding an expedition. I'm looking to become an explorer of a sort. I heard. Bartrand's hard to take, but his information is usually good. Hard to take? <laughs> That's putting it mildly. I'll tell you what. I still have my old contacts. You need some runecrafting done, I can arrange it for you. Take care, Hawk. Don't get dead. You've unlocked a crafting station from which you can order items given a recipe and resources. Another station is... and it's gone. I really don't like that they disappear tips before you're done reading them. You don't seem to like your brother very much. And here I thought it took blood magic to read minds. Huh? I had a twin brother. Carver. He used to nail my braid to the bed while I was sleeping. Oh, I great. I thought I'd miss him this much. Sorry about your brother. Hey, you want mine? I got a spare. <laughs> Honestly, he sounded sounds like a bit of a dick, so not going to be too cut up about the fact that we knew him for five minutes and then he died. Uh, rune of Protection. You can order runes if you discover the right combination of resources along with a recipe. Resources you've discovered are permanently available to craftsmen, but placing an order costs money. Once you've ordered a route... Are you shitting me? Game, please! Why would you do this? <laughs> Oh my god. Is it that hard to just make it stay there until you press A? Fuck me. Oh, codex updated? Does it go into the codex if you aren't done reading it, I guess? Better than nothing, I suppose. Uh, 
Recipes cost money, can only be used if you've discovered the appropriate, appropriate quantity. Use crafting stations to order unique items. Stations can be found in Kirkwall and in your home. Okay. Was there anything else? No. Alright. Uh, okay. Move along. So it looks like the next place to go is around here. I don't suppose... Can we see where the pub is? What was it called? The Hanged Man or something? No. Doesn't look like... It's around here, I guess. Bong. Have you seen a dog? Small, with a blue bow about her neck. Afraid not. Sebastian! Stop this madness! The Chantry cannot condone revenge, Sebastian! It is my right, my duty, to show these assassins there is nowhere in the free marches to hide. This is murder. No. What happened to my family was murder. Taffy? All right. Taffy, here you go. And Andraste did say, those who harm a house of the Maker have done harm unto the Maker himself. Duty. A grave crime was committed against all free-thinking men and women in the Free Marches. The ruling Vale family in Starkhaven, my family, was brutally murdered, down to the youngest babe in arms. This massacre was carried out by members of the Flint Mercenary Company. I hereby offer a bounty on the head of each Flint Company soldier in the Kirkwall vicinity. Prince Sebastian Vale? Prince? Is this... Is this, the, is this a DLC? The Exiled Prince or whatever it was called? I guess so. I guess I accept. Am I high enough level to do it? One would hope. Can we actually, like, go in these places? I can, okay. I kind of was expecting it to be, like, nah. Do you ever wish you lived in Orzammar? Great ancestors, no. You know what Orzammar is? It's cramped tunnels filled with nug shit and body odor. And every person there thinks he's better than you because his great-great-great-grandfather made a water clock or something. <laughs> but they're your people. Don't you even wonder what it would be like? I have a good imagination. Why would I waste it on that? Lol. Uh, okay, can't go up there. The Commandments of the Maker. These truths the Maker has revealed to me. As there is but one world, one life, one death, there is but one God, and he is our Maker. They are sinners who have given their love to false gods. Magic exists to serve man and never to rule over him. Foul and corrupt are they who have taken his gift and turned it against his children. They shall be named Malefica, accursed ones. They shall find no rest in this world or beyond. All men are the work of our Maker's hands, from the lowest slaves to the highest kings, those who bring harm without provocation to the least of his children are hated and accursed by the Maker. Those who bear false witness and work to deceive others know this. There is but one truth. All things are known to our Maker, and he shall judge their lies. All things in this world are finite. What one man gains, another has lost. Those who steal from their brothers and sisters do harm to their livelihood and to their peace of mind. Our Maker sees this with a heavy heart. Can I talk to any of these? Sister Samaya. The orphan Ferelden's ran off again after we fed them. There is no I wish they'd let us help them. Oh It'd be better than girls. scraping by on the streets of Darktown. Dear me, are you here to make a donation? Sure I'm not. Pa Valen, the occupied north. In the 30th year of the Steel Age, the first Kunari ships were sighted off the coast of Parvalen in the far north, marking the beginning of a new age of warfare. 
History calls this the First Kunari War, but it was mostly a one-sided bloodbath with the Kunari advancing far into the mainland. Kunari warriors in glittering steel armour carved through armies with ease. Their cannons, the likes of which our ancestor ancestors had never seen, reduced city walls to rubble in a matter of seconds. Stories of Kunari occupation vary greatly. It is said they dismantled families and sent captives to learning camps for indoctrination into their religion. Those who refused to cooperate disappeared to mines or construction camps. For every tale of suffering, however, there is another of enlightenment, deriving from something called the Kun. This is either a philosophical code or a written text that governs all aspects of Kunari life, perhaps both. One converted Saharan reported pity for those who refused to embrace the Kun as if the conquerors had led him to a sort of self-discovery. For all my life I followed the Maker wherever his path led me, he wrote, but in the Kun I have found the means to travel my own path. It has been said that the most, that the most complete way to wipe out a people is not with blades but with books. Thankfully a world that had repelled four blights would not easily bow to a foreign aggressor, and so the exalted marches began. The greatest advantage of the Chantry-led forces was the Circle of Magi. For all their technology, the Kunari appeared to harbour great hatred for magic. Faced with cannons, the Chantry responded with lightning and balls of fire. The Kunari armies lacked the sheer numbers of humanity. So many were slain at Manus Pell on both sides that the Vale is said to be permanently sundered, the ruins still plagued by restless corpses. But each year the Chantry pushes further and further into the Kunari lines, although local converts to the Kun prov proved difficult to return to Andraste's teachings. By the end of the Storm Age, the Kunari were truly pushed back. Ravain was the only human land that retained the Kunari religion after being freed, and its rulers attempt to barter peace, and its rulers attempted to barter a peace. Most human lands signed the Lemerin Accord, accepting the Tavinta Imperium. It is a shaky peace that has lasted to this day. Okay. Who does not enjoy a good old shaky peace? Nothing in here. It's a big statue. <laughs> I wasn't expecting blue polka dots and shit for the ceiling. This burning itch. If you do this for me, huh? never step foot in that brothel again. I swear. Banter. The founding of the Chantry. Cordilius Dracon, king of the city-state of Orlay, was a man of uncommon ambition. In the year minus 15 ancient, the young king began construction of a great temple dedicated to the Maker, and declared that by its completion he would not only have united the warring city-states of the south, he would have brought Andrastian belief to the world. In minus 3 ancient, the temple was completed. There in its heart, Dracon knelt before the eternal flame of Andraste and was crowned ruler of the Empire of Orlay. His first act as emperor, to declare the Chantry as the established Andrastian religion of the Empire. It took three years and several hundred votes before the before Alessa of Montsimard was elected to lead the new Chantry. Upon her coronation as divine, she took the name Justinia, in honour of the disciple who recorded Andraste's songs. In that moment, the ancient era ended, and the Divine Age began. Locks of the Golden Fool Wait, what? Quest updated? What's that? Side quests? Ah. A satirical tome about a deluded brother of the Chantry who sought peace between elves and humans, a condemnation of fanatics of both races, it is favoured by radical elves choosing to live in Darktown. Okay. So do I take it to them? If I mark it, does that... I don't know. Uh, the History of the Chantry, Chapter 1. The first blight devastated the Tavinta Imperium. Not only had the Darkspawn ravaged the countryside, but Tavinta citizens had to face the fact that their own gods had turned against them. Dumat, the old god once known as the Dragon of Silence, had risen to silence the world, and despite the frenzied pleas for help, the other old gods did nothing. The people of the Imperium began to question their faith, murdering priests, and burning temples to punish their gods for not returning to help. In those days, even after the devastation of the First Blight, the Imperium stretched across the known world. Fringed with barbarian tribes, the Imperium was well prepared for invasions and attacks from without, fitting then that the story of its downfall begins from within. The people of the far northern and eastern reaches of the Imperium rose up against their powerful overlords in rebellion. 
the Tevinta Magisters summoned demons to put down these small rebellions, leaving corpses to burn as examples to all who would dare revolt. The Imperium began to tear itself apart from within, throngs of angry and disillusioned citizens doing what centuries of opposing armies could not. But the Magisters were confident in their power, and they could not imagine surviving a blight only to be destroyed by their own subjects. Even after the Blight, Tevinter commanded an army larger than that of any other organization in Thedas, but that army was scattered and its morale dwindling. The ruin of Tevinter was such that the Alamari barbarians who had spread their clans and holds over the wilderness of the Ferelden Valley at the far southeast edge of the Imperium saw weakness in their enemy and after an age of oppression embarked on a campaign not only to free their own lands but to bring down mighty Tevinter as well. The leaders of that blessed campaign were the great barbarian warlord Maferath and his wife Andraste. Their dreams and ambitions would change the world forever. That one, I feel like we have read in DAO. I don't know if it was like a one for one, but that one felt familiar. All right, I think that's everything we can explore here. Let's explore more of Kirkwall. Oh, hello. What is this now? Uh, of course, the world map thing explaining it disappeared before I really started to read it. That's good. Um, what is this? Oh. 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 Interesting. Huh. So you get to both those places by going to Lowtown. Okay. The docks has a duty there. Is that the name of a quest? Uh, a friend of the guard is accessed by Hightown. Uh, okay, let's go to Lowtown. 